Welcome to Circuit Analysis. I'm Jesse, and today we're going to be getting started with circuit simulations in Altium Circuit Studio 1.5. This is the cheaper version of Altium, but it should be pretty much the same as the full version. So if you find any differences and you're using the full version, please let me know in the comments. Altium uses this XSpice, which is part of the ng-spice open source package, which is a derivative of the original Berkeley Spice. So here we are in Circuit Studio, and we're going to go File, New PCB Project, and we'll just call this one Test Sim. Now right-click on the new project, Add New to Project Schematic. So Altium, like ORCAD and some other programs, is mainly focused on PCBs, so the SPICE simulation is a bit of a side feature that's not fully integrated so most of the parts uh, do not have spice libraries so you have to be careful which parts you're using and make sure you're using ones that do have libraries attached to them luckily circuit studio does come with a few libraries of parts that have simulation models but they aren't installed by default so you have to go to libraries here and then um, I've already installed them here, but you go install from file, and that should take you here by default uh, to your installation. Altium CS library, and then there's this simulation folder. If you open that up, you want to select all of these and click open. And that will give you... Uh, these extra libraries here. So now when you click this drop down, besides the default miscellaneous devices and miscellaneous connectors, you'll have these simulation, math, piece by source, special, and transmission line. So for this demonstration, I'll just do a transient analysis of an op amp switching. And we'll start off by getting some resistors. Actually, uh, the miscellaneous devices do you have spice models in most of them? So if we do like this resistor, surface mount resistor here, we can put a couple of these down and escape. And if you double click on these, you'll notice it has here this simulation field and you can double click on that. That comes up with this simulation model here and you can see the spice template down here and then if you click on parameters it has the one parameter which is the value and this port map talks about mapping between the symbol here and the model so then on the bottom it has this netlist preview and this model file here which are pretty empty in this case but what it's going to do is it's just going to take the reference designator, the two ports, and then the value. And that's basically all you need to make a spice resistor. So next we'll get a capacitor. Space bar to rotate it. And we'll get a couple of voltage sources from the source directory and for the op amp we'll get the only op amp that they have you can put stars around search keys words and then just select the libraries to try and find stuff so this is the only operational amplifier that I could find. And it says AD645A. You can see that it's SPICE model. Here it has a, a more complicated file. So this is we can make it a little bigger. So this is the spice code here for this op amp circuit.
So the last component we need is a ground node, which we can get from home and power port ground. Now to zoom in, we can hold control and scroll to get a better view of our circuit. And we'll press the W key to switch to the wire tool and we can wire everything up. I'm going to add another resistor to the output of this op amp with control C, control V. And the other thing I'm going to do is make some little uh, short wires up here. So I'll make this and then I'll right click to end it. And uh, these guys will be connected over here. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And then to connect them in the net list, I'll go press the N key for net label, put two net labels, and you can double click, hit escape a couple times to get out of that wire tool. Double click on this and we'll call this one VCC. And you can control C control V, oh, escape, control C, control V on the label to put it over there, V, E, E, and control C, control V, oh, it's hard to get these things selected, control C, control V. So now these points are connected. We don't have to have wires going all the way around. And we'll label this one the same, VCC and VEE. -E. The other thing we want to do is see what the value of these guys is. So see, if you look at these voltage sources, here's the simulation profile, and it gives the designator, the two ports, and then the value property here. Uh, but this one doesn't have a value right now, so you have to click uh, visible and then we'll give it a value of 10. Okay, so now it's 10 volts here. You could also, you could make this 10 volts if you want. It'll just ignore the V. Um, you can put multipliers too, like a M is milli, K is, you know, times a thousand, or there's meg or G. So then this one, we're going to want to do the same with these. At this point, I'm just going to delete them and copy and paste this one because that's a little quicker than resetting the property. And then we'll just rename this VEE. -E. This one here, we'll just call V1. And I think this one, we'll actually make these minus 15, no. Nah. Is VCC. We'll make this one 15 volts and the VEE will be minus 15 volts to power this op amp. This is a good time to save our our project here so we can uh, save as and we'll just call it um, op amp. So these guys have red lines on them because they all have the same reference designator. So we have to go through and update all those, give them unique designators. I'm going to call it op amp uh, U1 because use standard for integrated circuits. So the op amp is high when the positive is above the negative and low otherwise. So what I want to do now is have it start off low and then go high. And I think the way to do that is to connect the positive over to this capacitor right here. So it'll start out low and then it will 
rise as the capacitor charges. And we'll put the negative on this resistor divider. So it'll start off low with the negative above the positive. And then as the capacitor charges, then this node will rise above this node and then the output will switch and go high. Uh, we want this to happen a little bit slower, I think. So we'll make this one micro farad. Now it's kind of nice to add a few more labels uh, to the nets so we can press in. Maybe put labels on all of these main nets here. And we'll just call this one like source. And this one we can call it in. N for negative and N P for positive and we'll just call this one out. Next we can go to the tools and set up our XSPICE simulation. Now this is kind of nice uh, since we labeled those they're easy to find. We want to put these to the in and the um, out as well. So we have the two inputs and the output of the op amp. Now here we want to do sim view setup, keep last setup. Um, actually want to change that to show active signals. So that'll just always show what you've got here. If you have keep last setup, then when you change these signals, it won't um, update them. And we want sheet to netlist active project. That's good. And then we want collect data from just everything is fine for now. You could lower these if you wanted to save space if you had a really giant simulation. And then over here we have transient analysis is the one that we want to do. And the first thing you have to do is uncheck this use transient defaults. I don't know what the point of that is, why you would want it to default to these time steps. It seems pretty useless. But we want the start time to be zero, the stop time to be, we'll do one millisecond, one M, and then transient step time, it says, and then max step time. Um, so I'm guessing that this transient step time is actually like the minimum, and then this is the maximum. So we can do one micro is the maximum, and maybe like, one nano is the minimum, something like that. And the rest of this is pretty good. We'll click OK. Now you can generate the net list here. This is not required, but we'll do it just for fun. So then this shows us the net list it generated for our circuit, which is mainly just this op amp model. And then here's the parts of the circuit. And if we go back, we can do run XSPICE simulation. So here is our output, and you can see they are all flat lines. And that is because we don't have an initial condition on the capacitor. So you can see the voltage on the capacitor is NP. And if we look here at NP, it's just flat at 10 volts. So it was started fully charged. So just calculated the circuit's steady state point and it said the capacitor is fully charged. So we need to set an initial condition for this to be starting at zero volts. So in SPICE, you do that with an IC parameter. Let's see how they do it here. Let's see. Um, so there's no initial condition parameters on this symbol yet. If we open up this simulation model, they have it here in the template. Look at this. So it says, if there's a parameter on the symbol called initial voltage, then send an IC parameter equal to the value of initial voltage. So it looks like here in parameters, we can just click this checkbox, component parameter, and we can put zero here for initial voltage. And that should pass that through. Oh, look, we can even see the zero right here.
Another thing I'll point out is sometimes it's nice to be able to see when you start having multiple um, values of things on the same part to see what uh, the label actually is. So if we click on this initial voltage, we can edit it. That brings this up and you can check this box to make the name vis visible as well. So now we have initial voltage zero. So let's go back to tools. We'll save this and run our XBIS. So that still didn't work. And I think there is another checkbox somewhere that I'm forgetting that makes it so you can activate the use of initial conditions. So I'll see if I can find that. We go back to our XBIS setup in our transient analysis. Yep, here it is, use initial conditions. So we have to check this checkbox. Okay, now we have initial conditions. Save that and we'll try it again. Boom, all right. Now you can see the input voltage rising and when it hits five volts, which is half of the uh, 10 volt input, which is what the resistor divider is putting out here, five volts. As soon as it hits, matches that, then it flips and the output of the op amp here goes from negative 15 volts up to positive 10 volts, it looks like. Anyway, that's the basics. So if you want to see more of these, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any questions or ideas for future videos you'd like to see, um, put them in the comments. And thanks for watching.